you're a slave and not a son. Is God able? And he saved his entire nation. So God is always where we are, but we're not always where he is. Now that make you nervous. You can't just not, you can't just not. So fight it. That though you're not working, I'm still working. God is able. Um, it may be somewhat intimidating. This is actually a seven-day fast, and we'll, we'll talk, about the, the, talk about that in a moment. But there's a momentum when you have an entire body moving toward this direction. Um, when I was in uh, uh, seventh grade, I went to Frost Junior High School, seventh or eighth grade, I believe it was seventh, and um, we, the, the, the coach had us to swim around. You know, it's an Olympic-sized pool. He had us to swim around or walk around or whatever we do the whole perimeter of the pool just in this in this rectangle and I was doing it I was going along um, I was swimming and sometimes I was hanging on because I needed to breathe other times I was walking in the shallow end <clears throat> but then what I did was I got tired and I just stopped moving altogether I stopped making effort to move but I kept moving because the current was so strong that even when I didn't feel like I could do it any longer I was moving along I was just <laughs> I, I, was, I was right along with everybody else because of the unity that created the current, that created the momentum that benefited everybody. That's why this is your opportunity. If you've never fasted before, and if you've been fasting and fasting and fasting and fasting, get in the current. The grace of God is going to be with you, and I want you to step out in faith. This fast is, is, is critical, and so let's sanctify ourselves, get ourselves ready, eat you a good dinner. Watch you a good Lions game. <laughs> Get to the business. <laughs> so uh, this food is, this is a, so the, the, um, the level that I'm, uh, we're, 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 we're giving here is this is a water fast, which means only water. But if you need other liquids, to sustain yourself, that's fine. Juices, don't drink no coffee, y'all. Don't go to the produce department, get every fruit in the thing, and blend it up with strawberries and, and, uh, uh, and ice. You're eating. <laughs> no, no, no. So, 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 so you got water fast. Some of us going to do water only. If, if, if you need to take a step over, or, or listen, listen, even, even if you get, like, weak one day and you're on a water fast and drink a little juice to, to kind of get through it. Again, this may be some people's first time. So that, that's, 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 the, that's the standard. That's what we're all reaching for. But consult your physician. Y'all getting this out there, this camera? Consult your physician. And if your physician has said that fasting is unhealthy for you for some reason like this, then don't do it. But still fast. Because your physician is not telling you to eat uh, 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 malts and, 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 and yeah, all, uh, cakes and candy and cheesecake factory. Here I go talking about food to hungry people in church again. Forgive me. Fast. Something. Pull stuff out of your diet. Do what Daniel did. Just eat vegetables. Um, uh, if, if that's what you must do for your health. Some people are diabetic and they need to, they, so, but my point is fast at the highest possible level that you can. Amen. We're also fasting judgment. Amen. We're fasting gossip. Amen. We're fasting stinginess. <laughs> Bless somebody. Do everything that you can to participate and give it all your heart. Give up something very, very important to you. If you can't do water fast, food is very, very important to me. So doing a water fast is a serious sacrifice. If for whatever health reasons you can't do that, give up all the things that you really look forward to eating. We'll get to, we'll talk about why in a little while, okay? Um, so this fast, we had, we, we had a fast earlier this year that we in, entitled this, but I still feel this in spirit. This fast is a recalibration fast. Recalibrate means to e re-examine the thinking, the plans, systems, values, 
and correct them according to new understanding or purpose. Now, this fast that, that in Isaiah, if you, if you look at the language, it's both, both corporate and personal. So what I want you to do is, is, is look at your life and look at the areas of your struggle. Look at the areas of need. Jot it down somewhere. Make a note in your device. But put these things down and take this fast personally. This is the time for, for yokes to be broken and things to, to fetters to fall off. So take it very personally. Jot your note down. Listen, spouses, um, give, give, give your other spouse uh, the right to go to God without you looking at their notes and, 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 and stuff like that. Just, just, just let, let everybody take this very, very personal. Very, very personal. And take it as a time for uh, recalibration. Um, so a few, few things we're going for here, a few prayer, prayer points. We're praying that we should be more spiritually in tune, that bondages be broken, that direction is clarified, strategy from heaven, financial breakthrough, health restored, hunger for the word, hunger for prayer, freedom in worship, favor in dealings, God's anointing, faithfulness to the ministry, a heart to serve, and a heart to and a faith to give at a new level. All right, y'all ready? Let's go dive into this word. So the word, when the Bible said, when God says, this is the fast I've chosen, what that means is the word chosen in the Hebrew comes from a word which means to take a keen look at, to prove, to choose. It denotes a choice which is based on a thorough examination of the situation and not an arbitrary whim. So when God says, this is the fast I've chosen, he's, 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 he's focused in right there. He zeroes in. Fasting gets God's attention. Fasting gets God's attention in some special ways. And so he's paying attention. Right now, if you've committed to do this fast, he's paying attention to you your life, to your station, to this ministry, since we're doing corporately. So let's talk a minute about the, the benefit of the exchange, because, um, listen, immediately, admittedly, giving up food is a serious sacrifice, especially if you like me. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat next Friday. <laughs> or I'm cooking it, or I'm asking my wife to cook it like she can cook it, and and I'm, Monday, I'm, I'm eating it all the way to get to Friday. I just, I really love food. <laughs> so the benefit of this exchange is David uh, Diga Hernandez said, for every divine action in faith, there's a spiritual reaction. For every divine action in faith, there's a spiritual reaction. When I move my hand in faith, God moves his hand in power. <clears throat> if I reach towards something in faith, then God meets me in that moment and releases the power for that to happen. So we have to believe in what the scripture says will bring power. Fasting is on. Let me read you some, some, some exploits here. Remember that in faith, Moses raised the rod and the Red Sea parted. Rods and seas have nothing to do with each other. But faith in God has to do with everything. So in faith, look at however ridiculous, that's really this is the first time he's done something with his rod. Back, in, back when, 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 when he was in the desert um, in, in uh, uh, Exodus 4, and God first approached him, and Moses was insecure. He said, I don't want to go. And God said, throw down your rod. And Moses gave him the rod. God got that rod in his hand, and power started coming out of it. And this is the first time he's using that. After that, in front of these people, since God said, raise up your rod. In faith, he raised the rod, and the Red Sea parted completely. Israel walked around the walls of Jericho, Seven times, and the last day, seven times around, and the walls fell. They walked in faith, and the walls fell. Elijah opened his mouth and called down fire from heaven, and that fire came down and burnt up everything. The Bible says it lapped up the water, it ate up the rocks, the sacrifice, everything, because he opened his mouth in faith. 
Laying hands on the sick, the Bible says they recover. Anointing the sick with oil, an act of faith. The Lord raises them up, preaching the gospel, and the lost are saved. Natural actions of faith yield supernatural reactions of power. Why are we talking about this? Because fasting is on this list of natural acts of faith. After one day of fasting, the prophet Samuel led the Israelites to victory against the dominant Philistines. The prophet Samuel, I didn't say General Samuel or Captain Samuel. Samuel was not anointed to fight. But after one day of fasting, he led them to defeat their most dominant enemy. In a time of fasting and prayer, the world-changing ministries of Paul and Barnabas were dispatched, and we have much of our New Testament thanks to that. After three days of fasting, the plan to massacre the entire nation of Israel, captive in Persia, was stopped, and it was reversed on their enemies. The king of Nineveh, after hearing Jonah prophesied their destruction, called a fast and he saved his entire nation. King Ahab. King who? King Ahab. If you know much about your Bible, this is a rotten dude right here. Rotten to the core. King Ahab after hearing of his well-deserved doom for wickedness, fasted and received the mercy of God. God sent his prophet to him, and God prophet said, man, you doomed. You in trouble. This is going to happen in your life, and you're going to be, let me just embellish for me. You're going to be laying on the ground, and your tongue hanging out, and your enemy going to kick you and stomp you to the ground, and then you're going to die. This man fasted. <laughs> God tapped the prophet on the shoulder and said, go back and tell him because he humbled himself. He gets my mercy. And everything I said will happen, but it won't happen in his lifetime. It's going to happen somewhere else because in faith, in fasting, he cried out for the mercy of God. And God relented his judgment. Darius, the king of Persia, after realizing he had been tricked into sentencing Daniel to the lion's den, fast all night. Then in the morning, he ran to the lion's den and said, oh, Daniel, is God able? Daniel said, Darius, live forever. God is able. These aren't Israelites we're talking about right here. So many people don't even know God. There he said, is your God able? <laughs> the Roman centurion Cornelius, while fasting and praying, saw a vision that led him and his household to become the first recorded Gentile conversions in the New Testament. So fasting is important. And it is an act of faith that God rewards with power. So let's get practical here for a minute. Let's talk about fasting in the physical body because I want you to be ready. So fasting is unique to other um, spiritual disciplines um, in that it focuses largely on your physical body. It goes to the core of your physical needs. It, it goes to the core, frankly, of your survival. And it's a pause in you sustaining your flesh and trusting God to sustain you spiritually. It works like the Sabbath. God from the, from the beginning instituted Sabbath every, every week, every seven days. And then they had, they, in, in Israel, they had Sabbaths of days, Sabbaths of months, Sabbaths of weeks, Sabbaths of years, Sabbaths of Sabbaths of years, um, because God needed rest to happen. Why did he institute the Sabbath, for two reasons. One, they needed rest after working all week. The second reason is he wanted them to know that though you're not working, I'm still working. Things won't shut down. He had, the, in the Jubilee fast, he would say, um, uh, 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 work the land for seven years and then don't work it at all the next year. Now, that make you nervous. 
if you live off the agriculture, that'd be like God saying, uh, work for, uh, at your job uh, for the next seven weeks and then don't go to work at all on the eighth week. <laughs> and I'll sustain you. So he said, don't y'all do anything on the, eighth, uh, on the eighth year and the harvest from what you did last year, I'm going to bless the land and the ring for. He said, then don't eat anything again on the ninth year because I got you then too. He, what he wanted him to know, you might not be doing anything, but I'm doing something. You can trust me. I'm always active. So fasting says, Lord, sustain my body while I pursue your spirit. Let's be totally honest. Fasting is, is it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a pause in, in earthly pleasures because we love to eat. And it's deliberately chosen because of that particular allegiance. Nothing... <clears throat> Nothing speaks to God in the way that fasting does. If you're willing to lay, lay, lay your pleasure aside and seek his pleasure, that does something to God. And clearly it's about pleasure because it was 1 uh, Corinthians 7, 5. Don't put it up there when the Bible says, uh, husbands and wives, uh, don't withhold from one another unless you've uh, agreed to do it for a time of fasting. He's t that, that's an earthly pleasure. That's a, a serious earthly pleasure. Somebody said Jesus. God's asking for a lot, but he's going to do a lot. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I said this in a Bible study. I've been one but a few people here. But I guess I'll say it again. If God created something more than intimacy, he didn't tell mankind about it. He kept that to himself. So... Mm -hmm. So let's consider man's first sin. It was a spiritual act of treason that entered through the natural act of eating. From the beginning, God wanted man to conquer his appetites. He filled that garden up with all these wonderful things. But the Bible says that that fruit that they weren't supposed to eat looked good. And it tasted good. And it had a reward with it. It would make one wise. They didn't realize it was their downfall. But the Bible, from the beginning, God set up a situation where you'd have to do something about your appetites. That's why there were two trees in the garden. One of life, and then this one where there was a choice. And when you choose to fast, you tell God, I'm giving you myself. I'm giving you my life. There had to be a choice in the garden. And there has to be a choice with us. Because if there is no choice, then you're a slave and not a son. And so we're choosing to fast in this moment to show God that he's all we want. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so fasting also, I told you we're going to practice we're here. Be practical. Fasting also demands that you rearrange your habits and priorities. It might take you a minute to figure out how to live. You might be bored sometimes because normally you would be eating right there. What am I supposed to be doing right now? You might usually start cooking at you know, 9 a.m. or 3 p.m., whatever it is, and you're not doing that. It's like, what do I do with my life? We're going to talk about that in a minute. God has a plan for your life. <laughs> but you're gonna, you may have to rearrange your priorities and do things different. Because what fasting does, fasting leaves God-ordained gaps for you to fill with him. You're going to have these spaces where it's almost like just numb and, and, and what do I do? That's a God-given gap for you to fill it up with him. To do something about your relationship with God when you would normally be da 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 da. Yeah. So what strengthens the influence of my spirit weakens the influence of my flesh. And that's what we're going for. This kind of fast uh, gets God's attention. Now, does God pay attention to me when I'm not fasting? Yes. But the problem is I'm not paying attention to him. God is always paying attention to us. And what fasting does is it puts God right here. And though he's always watching me, though he's always with me, though he's always caring for me, I'm going, I'm God, you, the Bible says God is present everywhere. He's omnipresent. So God is always where we are, but we're not always where he is. Holy Spirit is all around you. Angels all over this room right now that you can't see. 
But that doesn't mean that we're where God is. John Piper said, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. So let's talk about this, this open reward thing. I'm giving uh, Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Let me see which way to go here. Mm-hmm. It says there, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites and with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, you have your reward. The Greek says in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, brush your teeth, comb your hair, iron your clothes, grab some mints, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. Not bubblicious, just, just get. That's pleasure. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, fast, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but your Father who is in heaven, uh, in, in, the, in the secret place, and your Father sees in secret and will reward you openly. So now, so, so let, let, me, let me deal with this right here. The Bible doesn't say, never tell anyone you're fasting. It says, don't fast to be noticed. Don't be superstitious about this. That if somebody finds out you're fasting, it's over. Oh, it's all messed up now. No, God's talking about intent. He's talking about not seeking glory. <clears throat> this is tragic. I've, 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 I've seen people, I've, I've seen people going like 40-day fast. And every time you see them, I'm on the 10th day of this 40-day fast. <laughs> But God is faithful. Next time. I'm on the 15th day of this 40-day fast. Man, it's hard, but I'm doing it. In Jesus' name, God is with me. I'm on the 25th day. I'm like 40 days, and you just got everything you're going to get. Out of seeking glory. <clears throat> Bob, don't, don't look pitiful while you're fasting. <laughs> even if you are going through don't, we talked about this last week don't look like what you're going through and by all means don't act like what you're going through we'll talk about that in a minute yeah yeah, yeah. So, so those who fast in the sight of men uh, for that reason have the emptiness of man's attention as their wages it says here now they use this word reward twice the kind you get when you, when you fast to be seen and the kind you get uh, fast and, and, and secret. When it talks about what you get from men, it calls us wages. In other words, you worked for little or nothing. But when it talks about God rewarding, it's talking about gifts. It's saying that God is going to give you things. God is going to lay up treasures for you that you know nothing about. The benefit of the fast is after the fast. <laughs> and it's not just a day or a week after the fast. While you, as long as you keep that portal open, God is dumping stuff in there on you. As long as you're in his face, heaven is laying up treasure for you. Battles, he's laying up the victory for future battles. He's laying up blessing for future needs. He's laying up healing for future sickness. All while you're in his face, the portal of heaven is open and God's dumping things on you that one day you'll find out and be like, well, how did this happen? That's because you went and gave yourself to God in a rich moment of fasting. Uh, so fasting draws heaven's attention toward you in, a, in an amplified way because you're paying attention to God. Have you ever, sisters, I've seen me pick on ladies a lot. I don't. But you, sisters, you know how you, when you, either with, you have a spouse right now <clears throat> or, you're, or you're single and you're, you're in the grocery store and um, uh, you look up and there's a gentleman there and, and he looks up, he does a double take. Something's it's on right now. If, if, if you like the way he looks, <clears throat> when he double takes like that, some of y'all go. <laughs> Others just turn around like they don't see him walk away. And like, please come say hi. Please come say hi. Ask for my phone number. Follow me over to the pecan goods aisle. If you, if, you're with, if you follow me, I know it's real. I know you're really after me. Why? Why? Now, now he just put something on your mind. And your mind is making these maneuvers and moves 
based on the attention that he paid to you. That's how it impacts God. When you pay God attention, he, he looks and takes a look. You, who, me? And he begins to give you gifts and things because he loves to be paid attention. God loves the love of his children. God loves the attention and the focus of his children. And when you focus on him like that, he can focus on you in ways that he can't when you're not looking at him. <clears throat> yeah. So um, fasting is, is about focus. And we often dread fasting, but God is pleased when, pleased when we fast. Because it's not about the suffering with God. Notice in that fast that um, up above six, one through five, God says, Have I called the kind of fast for you to afflict yourself? Have I called the kind of fast where you just somewhere suffering <clears throat> and mistreating yourself? He said, I haven't chosen that kind of fast. I've chosen this kind of fast to where you're lifted up even during the fast. And so God is like, I finally have you to myself. And this is about time with you. You must get closer because this is some. Sometimes God wants to whisper something to you. He wants to speak something into your ear. A secret that belongs to you and him. And fasting brings that to pass. It closes the distance between us and God. And the suffering is just the effect of you walking away from your dependence on things other than God. The reason that you suffer was in a fast. And don't get scared. I got some encouragement for you. But the reason fasting has suffering is because you're walking away from something that's, that, that you're depending on instead of God. But once you get in the groove of the fast and the wheels start turning and you start hearing God speaking and he promising you things, that, that, that's, that's the whole point. It's about the focus. It's about the focus because Yahweh has been longing to get to us and he has levels that he's longed to give us. Yeah. You know, as, as couples, even, even friendships. We see each other almost every day. We love each other. Me and my wife, we, we, we spend a lot of time together in one of his presence. And when we're not, we're talking or texting or doing something. We're in constant communication because that, that's our relationship. And we, we love each other. And that's what we love to do. But every now and then, you get away from it all. Like last week, we got away from it all. And that's entirely different than that everyday kind of love. That's total attention. That's right here. That's me and you. And it was a blessing. I ain't going to testify, but it really did some things inside of us. Why? Because in that space, it's only about us. We love y'all, but if you tried to text me, you probably saw that half moon, do not disturb. Why? Because it's only about us, and that's what God is after. That's what he needs. God needs the, I'm going to make this different, God. I know we do the daily thing. I got my prayer times. I read my Bible at this time. I go to church at that time. I do this at that time. I check on somebody at this time. But God, I'm going to leave that everyday kind of love I got you and give you this love right here. Me and you. And God jumps all over that. The food isn't God's point. The focus is God's point. Forget about the food and get into the focus and let God change your life. Fasting is about giving God your full attention. Some practicals here. Let me say it here. Okay. I think we can do this. So some practicals. The first thing you need to know um, in fasting is um, you need information to expel, expel fear because fasting can be terrifying if you've never done it or if you haven't done it in a long time. So the first thing you need to understand and the first piece of information that you need when going into fast is that you won't die. <laughs> I lose the spirit of fear in Jesus' name or bind the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. <laughs> you won't die. 
Second thing is you won't be miserable throughout your fast. People tend to have a day. You know, uh, there's, with me, the second day is the biggest fight. First day, I'm good. That second day, I hit molasses. I, I, I get weaker. Sometimes I get fatigued, and I get, I get, I get, I get. And but Wednesday and on, or, or whatever the third day is, and on, it gets good. Some people, the first day is the worst day. But you're not going to suffer the whole time of the fast. Trust God and hang on in there. Physical reactions that are possible. You might have get a headache. If you drink a lot of coffee, that it's, your body gets the craving that and the toxins are getting out. Just let it out. Drink lots of water. Drink lots of water. So you might have a moment of a headache. You might get fatigued and feel like just, just quitting and giving up. Drink lots of water. Get through that stage of the process, and then it will get better after that. The best way to sideline your natural hunger is to headline your spiritual hunger. What you do is, in those moments when you would be doing something else, or when that stuff gets on you, smack that flesh in the face and say, you are not going to take, you, 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 you've been ruling for way too long. This is about me and God. This ain't about food. This is about focus. God is focused on me, and I'm focusing on him. And we're about to get something done together. It's not about you suffering. It's about you shifting. God wants to shift something in your life that you can't get to until you're in his face and you see clearly what to do next. He's going to tell you things about your life that you could not hear before. Say, God, shift me. Another piece of advice. If you stumble, don't give up. Get up. If you're at the office and something's smelling good, and something, I have forgotten I was fasting before, y'all. And before I knew it, there was food going down my throat. You know, in the old school I came from, it was over. You done sinned. And you <laughs> Ask somebody who is fasting to pray for you <laughs> to get you out of the mire. If you stumble, I would forget. If you don't forget, <laughs> and you just grab something that morning and say, God, I just, I just got that. Just as soon as it's over, don't give up, get up, and keep right on moving forward. I'm on a fast. That Big Mac will pass in a little bit. I'm on a fast. This too shall pass. <laughs> Stay in there. God ain't gave up on you. Don't give up on him. <laughs> your disposition while you're fasting. According to God, what God said uh, about fasting in Isaiah, uh, in, in the, those first 12 verses, um, you shouldn't get meaner, you should get sweeter. <laughs> During the fast, people shouldn't be like, what's wrong with you? It should be more like, okay, what's going on here? You ain't never been this nice. Why are you offering me to buy lunch and you say you're not even going to lunch? They should see, li, 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 li. They should see more God in you during the fast. Why? Because your increased proximity to God should make you more like him, Amen. not less. If you're really getting close to God, you're going to hear his voice and you're going to want to be like him. If you're less godly during a fast, it's because you're not fasting, you're just not eating. <laughs> So if you want God to shift you in the fast, you have to make the shift. Remember, it's, it's, it's when you extend your hand in faith, God extends his hand in power. Every time you reach forward toward him, something uh, wonderful happens. So engorge yourself on the word during a fast. Engorge, read it, have it playing in the car. Engorge yourself on worship and worship music. 
and gorge yourself on prayer. Pray every day. If sometimes, sometimes you'll be up at night because your body's still trying to figure out what's going on. Well, just whisper a prayer. It's, uh, just whisper a prayer right there where you are. Don't wake nobody up or get out the room and just go into people prayer. Uh, have, have godly fellowship with people. Call people who are on the fast with you and talk to them. If you need help, call somebody and say, help. That godly fellowship feeds, feeds this endeavor. Engorge yourself on kindness and gratitude. Be, be, be proactive. The, 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 the flesh. I'm not even, even going to say the devil. It's the flesh, y'all. The flesh is going to want to do things. Get ahead of the flesh. Before you go to work, before you get in public, get, do something to feed your spirit so that your flesh is not dominant. Your flesh has something to contend with. I'm going to say thank you for everything. <laughs> Just fill your heart with gratitude. Fill your heart with kindness. Put the grocery cart back in the cart corral. Just be like Jesus. <laughs> if you watch TV, let it be something that's going to feed you. We're going to get the game in the day before we're done, y'all. And you'll be off the fast by the next game. <laughs> so if you watch TV, let it be something spiritual, something that feeds you. Read the book you've been promising God that you're going to read. I got about three of them in my backpack that I've been carrying for months. <laughs> this is my shot right here. <laughs> yeah. If you listen to music, let it be music that edifies you. If you like social media, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Just don't do it. If, 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 if you're worried about your friends and they're going to think something wrong with you because you always, and then you stop, just put something out there. They listen, y'all, I'm not going to be available this week. Everything is good. Just because it's, it's, a, it's, a tra- it's a hole. It is a hole. You will see something, and then everything changes. And now you're heading down that path, trying to figure out what that is, and you don't realize you're just descending into. You remember um, uh, 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 Road Runner Coyote? They would have. They would get those um, um, acne. Acne is it acne or acne? Acne. Okay, acne is this, right? Acne. They would get those. Uh, they would get them acne products, and, and 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 Coyote went and he got an acne hole. And so when you throw the hole on the ground, there's a hole there now. And he tried to get red, uh, what's it, I was going to say, road runner. I was going to say red lobster. <laughs> <laughs> he, threw the, he threw the hole down there, and inevitably, road runner would never get in that hole. Coyote would be down in that hole he bought. That's social media. <laughs> that is just a hole. <laughs> so just let it go for seven days. Look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Say, <laughs> so come out. <laughs> so we must also fast our thoughts. It's not just our bodies that need to fast. Our minds need to fast. We have to think differently on purpose. Get rid of criticism and negativity and judgment and because you just don't know. How, how, and I won't go on that path. But listen, get, get rid of uh, backbiting. Get rid of complaining. Get rid of uh, uh, scrutinizing. All these things that can be toxic because those things take your attention away from God. He's got something he wants you to think about. So fight it. The only reason to get rid of a thought is to think something else. You can't just not. You can't just not. <laughs> You're going to be thinking about something. Choose what to think about. Yeah. Let's, let's talk, speaking of minds, fasting is a good time to deal with your strongholds. We visit this every now and then, but let me make this distinction. Uh, what's it say? 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. This is literally what we're talking about right now. So the word strongholds in the Greek is reasonings. The word picture is, uh, in times of battle, you would have a, a, some kind of a barrier that there's two enemies here, some kind of a barrier that one enemy would put up, and they might put holes in it, or they would strategically be in places where they could see their enemy, but their enemy couldn't see them. 
Their enemy could actually shoot at them, but it would hit, hit the barrier first. That's a stronghold. Listen, we can't simply pull down strongholds by praying about it. There's a difference between a stronghold and a strong man. Jesus talked about the strong man. This is an entity. This is a being. This is a demon that, that, that has influence. But the, the stronghold isn't the strong man. The stronghold is where the strong man hides. And we have certain ways of thinking that our enemy hides behind. We justify things. We, 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 we feel like we deserve to be a certain way. Or we, we have all these things that harmonize with the enemy. And any of our thoughts that harmonize the enemy are thoughts of darkness. And the Bible says he's the prince of the darkness of this war. He, he has the right to be where there's dark. So God will deal with some of our dark thinking. Places where we don't harmonize with the word of God. Places where we don't think like he does. He's going to pull down. Listen, it didn't blast. He said, you, you don't blast out strongholds. You can cast out a stronghold. You can cast out a strong man, but you can't cast out a stronghold. The Bible says you have to pull it down. It has to be dismantled. And God wants to get in our thoughts this week and dismantle things and remove things so our enemy has nowhere to hide in our lives. Say, yeah. devil, you can't hide behind that no more. I'm thinking like God now. The Bible says, I'm going to get it off this, but the Bible says when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes into dry place, says he's seeking rest and finding none. And then he says, I'm going to go back where? To my house. My house? The devil can have a crib right up in your heart. So we got to take away his place to go. We have to take away his place to hide in us. So let God deal with your mind. Let fast your mind. Fast negative thoughts. Fast negative energy. Fast, just fast all that stuff. When it comes up, make your mind go somewhere else. Read a Bible. Uh, call somebody. Do whatever you have to do. Fasting will help you get to the enemy's hiding places in your mind. <sighs> help, Jesus. <laughs> Fasting is it's, it's like, um, like an astringent that, that, that removes what is otherwise uh, immovable. So, okay, so last point here, last couple of points. So last week we dealt with something. If you didn't hear last week, week before last, you got to get, you got, you got to, you got to get to it. Because we talked about some things in the scripture that fasting benefits and causes. One is repentance. Second one we looked at was plans, instructions, a direction of fasting uh, is good for leadership establishment. Uh, fasting is good for favor. For spiritual preparation, fasting is good when you're in trouble, uh, developing for Christ-likeness, uh, increased access to your spiritual authority, just, just a bunch of things we talked about. So get them all. So we just got a couple more this week. So God will identify you when you fast. Uh, give me Matthew three sixteen. And when he was baptized, so this is Jesus. He went to John. He said, baptize me. John said, man, I need to be baptized. And Jesus said, do it again. It must be fulfilled. So baptize me. Um, and so when Jesus had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, uh, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending. Who saw? He saw. Everybody didn't see what he saw. We'll get to that later. Descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Keep coming. And he's 17 and 18 as well. Oh, oh, no, you're right. You're right, you're right. Are you right? And say, hey, thank you, George. I didn't even give you that, but you gave it to me. I need 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Give you Matthew 4. Uh, one through three. And Jesus was led up by the spirit uh, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So what happened chronologically is he went to be baptized. He got baptized. The spirit of God came on and said, this is my beloved son, God said, in whom I'm well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Keep it coming. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Uh-huh. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God. Give me verse 6. That's the first temptation. This is the second one. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, 
This fast was clearly about identity. God told everybody, well, I don't know who all heard it. Some people thought they heard thunder when God. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He got into this fast, and here comes the devil says, if you are the son of God. Sometimes the devil would challenge your true identity. That's because God is trying to identify you and make it crystal clear. And in a time of fasting, God will say things about you to you that you've never heard before to shore up who you are. Give me 4 and 18. So G, uh, Luke 4, 18. Jesus, uh, he, God identified him. Then the devil came after his identity. And then the Bible says, mm, 4, 18. Did I mean 4, 4, 18? Is that 4, 18? Luke, Luke, Luke. What it says is, Jesus, he, after being identified, he went into the temple, picked up the Bible scroll, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach to the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them to the bruised, and preach the acceptance of their Lord. Then he put the book down and sat down and he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears because I'm here. That text was talking about the Messiah. That's why they tripped when he said it. He said, today you can get this because I'm here. Why? Because my father just told me who I am. I was tested on who I am. I had doubters about who I am. I had conversation about who I am. The devil came after who I am, and I stood the test in a time of fasting. God shored me up because I gave him my full attention. I gave me to God, and God gave me to me. You can get the gift of you in a fast. Got to keep, got to keep moving. Um, Give me, give me five minutes, y'all. Another benefit of fasting. This is, this is, this one's. Fasting can help in mourning. Give me second Samuel 1, 11 and 12. Therefore, David took hold of his uncle. So, no, this is right after um, Saul, King Saul, who was like a father to David. And then he got after him, and he went back and forth. And it was, he was going to kill him. He was going to not. But David loved Saul and his son, Jonathan. And the Philistines got a hold of him when the judgment of God came on Saul. Uh, on, on, on Saul. And David found out they had been brutally killed. Therefore, David took a hold of his own clothes and tore them. And so did all the men who were with him. Keep going. And they mourned and wept and fasted until the evening for Saul and Jonathan, his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David and his men mourned and they fasted. Give me 1 Samuel 31, 11 through 13. First Samuel 31, 11 through 13. It should be up there. Now, when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead, this is the same situation. This is another group of people that heard this Saul died. When the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistine had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night and took the body of Saul and the body of his son from the wall of Bethshan because they had literally hung them up in display. And they came to Jabesh and burned them there. And on, keep next verse 13. And they took up their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Fasting and mourning were often coupled in Scripture together, um, as was fasting and praying, but sometimes, like in this case, they fasted and they mourned. And this might seem strange, uh, but it wasn't uncommon in the Bible for people to fast when mourning. Why? I don't fully understand this, y'all. Still digging around in this. But I had to say it now because so many people in our congregation have lost loved ones. Some very unexpected and tragic. Some moved on later in life. Um, But we've all endured mourning pretty intently for the past year. We have just this week, we have another uh, member of our churches, members of our churches, uh, loved one passing. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So I don't fully understand this other than to say that fasting positions you closer to your comforter. A time of fasting could open up the Holy Spirit's access to you. 
to where he can speak to you. He can touch you. He can clarify things. He can mend you. He can soothe you, heal you, lift you because you're giving him your full attention. So it might be something beneficial if you're going through mourning to spend a moment in fasting and give Holy Spirit better access to God because it makes you vulnerable to him and perhaps gives you safer levels of vulnerability. God is not, a, God is not uh, turned off by our tears. God's not turned off by our anger. You haven't read the book of Psalms if you don't think that God, the people don't talk to God when they're mad. All of David's Psalms were not, um, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. He's like, God, how long are you going to forget about me forever? How long are you going to sit there and watch them mistreat me? Bust my enemy in the jaw and knock his teeth out. These are Psalms, y'all. So take your mourning heart to God. And pour it out in them over the fast. And, and tell God what's on your mind. Tell him what's on your heart. Tell him how you feel. And get closer to your comforter. And watch God do something in your life. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice. And untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free. And break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them, 